Welcome to Robert Wood Johnson University Hospitals Health Talk. I'm Dr. Douglas Shashinsky of Robert Wood Johnson Physician Enterprises Wire and Internal Medicine. Over 3.5% of the world identifies as LGBTQIA, but only a handful of healthcare clinics currently exist to care for this, patient, this population's unique and diverse needs. A recent national survey of transgender people determined that over half felt that they had to teach their primary care provider how to take care of them. Over 20% experienced harassment in healthcare settings, and nearly a quarter avoided seeking health care due to fear of discrimination, violence, or stigma. Robert Wood Johnson University Hospital Somerset became the first hospital in New Jersey to offer specialized primary care services for the LGBTQIA community with the opening of PROUD, P-R-O-U-D, Family Health. The center is located at the hospital Somerset Family Practice. Joining us today to tell us more about Proud Family Health are Dr. Lalitha Hanch, Chief Director of the Somerset Family Practice, and Jackie Barris, a registered nurse at Robert Wood Johnson Hospital, Somerset, who facilitates the hospital's transgender family support group. Welcome to the show. Thank, Thank you. you. Dr. Hanch, tell us a little bit about yourself. What got you so involved with LGBTQIA? How proud you are of doing what you're doing? Um, I'm the program director at um, Robert Wood Johnson Somerset Family Medicine Residency, as well as the medical director of the Proud Family Health. Um, we are um, excited to um, offer these services. Uh, the hospital approached us because of the um, need for uh, the LGBTQIA uh, communities, uh, needs for um, health care, and in particular, primary care. Um, and Jackie, tell us what really LGBTQIA really <laughs> means, and so the community understands what it stands for. Well, the LGBTQIA is basically an acronym that used to describe the uh, gender, non-variant gender, um, such as lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender. Q stands for questioning or queer, I for intersex, and A is for asexual or ally. So basically, it has been known to be an LGBT, but now there are more and more gender variant are coming out, such as the queer, the intersex, and the asexual or the ally. So basically, this is a community that speaks for the um, specialized needs of the community nowadays. Again, the most important thing that uh, Robert Wood Johnson University Hospital Somerset uh, uh, Medical Center, as well as the family practice, is the inclusion of people who previously would be excluded from the system. So the services that PROUD provides are? We uh, provide primary care for, um, it, for the community as well as um, office-based procedures, um, routine uh, wellness care, um, as, and then in addition we are uh, providing hormone therapy um, if that is uh, required as well as referrals for further um, further services so uh, that we don't provide. So basically anything that a <clears throat> patient really or a person would really need to take care of their health care. Correct. So Correct. It's uh, we, nothing really specialized. It's that you're taking care of people appropriately and including them where they normally wouldn't have been included previously. Correct. We um, take into account the special uh, needs that um, this community may need um, in terms of their health care services and alter, well, and change um, the, our approach, but the basic services are. Uh, similar to what we would provide um, I think in routine think It's totally health. right. The, 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 it provides a specialized primary care for this group. However, the, there's a lot of um, concerns for this community when they seek health care providers because of the experiences, the negative experiences that they have, such as violence or stigma and sometimes the inappropriateness. Not a lot of health care providers, I should say, are sensitive and and train in terms of addressing the concerns. And I totally agree with Dr. Hange. You know, it's no different from any other p person to receive the care. But specialized in a sense that, you know, use of appropriate pronouns should be addressed. Um, to but it's make also facial expressions. Exactly. Right from the get go, mm -hmm. facial expressions. Yes. And, 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 and they have experienced a lot of uh, negativity. And I think. 
it is important for any healthcare providers or healthcare system to ensure that uh, they promote welcoming environment and safe space for this community. Again, we're trying as Robert Wood Johnson University Hospital to include people who need special services. And how would you identify the people who do need those special services? Well, we have what you call the uh, business resource group of Robert Wood Johnson University Hospital under the Office of Diversity and Inclusion. These business resource group are basically, as you said, it's all about inclusiveness. So it all started about all the employees where it well represented like the, the African American, the Asian, the veterans. And now we have identified that there is a need to address the LGBTQIA healthcare needs in the community. And that's how we come up with the, what you call the LGBT BRG, such as the word proud. That's how it started. And the uniqueness of their health care needs. Um, the, I think it's more the approach to the health care than the uh, specific unique needs. Um, it's uh, providing a space where they feel comfortable to talk about the things that are um, often uncomfortable for um, them to talk with uh, people who aren't familiar with their um, community. And it's done at the Somerset Family Practice Program. Do you have specific hours devoted to it, specific days devoted to it? What would, a, if, if I, again, I have a patient who is part of the LGBTQIA community and is looking for something special that I may not be able to do and I would like to recommend that they see you, what would I tell that person to do? So they can call our, um, we have a dedicated phone line for um, the, for the um, services and uh, we offer office hours specifically for the community uh, for Monday evening, six to nine. So again, evening. during that time, it's only the LGBTI, LGBTQIA people who are there, so they don't have to worry about any harassment or anything and it, as they're coming in, leaving, et cetera. Correct. It's for them and their families. Again, being part, we want to be a family oriented uh, also, so the family can be there with the patient themselves also. Correct. Uh, you had mentioned hormone therapy. You want uh, the community out there probably doesn't understand. So when somebody is uh, transitioning, some of the services that they may uh, desire is to be able to take hormones in order for their body to reflect how they feel inside. Transitioning, uh, just so people understand, what does that mean? Uh, transitioning from male to female or female to male. Um, and uh, it's a process. It's something that happens over many years for most uh, people. And um, we uh, are... Um, able to provide um, the services uh, medically uh, that they may need to so further So you start transition. from the beginning through the whole transition process through Correct. the end? Correct. We have uh, kids, we do see kids and we help uh, the kids and their families um, in the process of beginning the transition. We don't do hormones until um, they're older, uh, but uh, there's a lot of social uh, support and um, counseling and things that need to happen uh, both for the uh, child as well as the family. Um, so again, the important thing not only is the hormonal therapy, but it's the social services involved, which most primary care offices don't have, can't offer, that you can offer. Correct. Correct. And that allows that person who is transitioning to understand the transition, get through the transition, and follow up afterwards and feel as if it was appropriate. That's our hope, yes. The transitioning is basically aligned with the transgender individuals, um, not for the LGBT, LGB, but for transgender individuals. Um, transitioning is very important because this is a process where a transgender individual is aligning herself or himself to the gender identity of that individual. I think uh, it's important to discuss just briefly about what is gender identity and sexual orientation. When you talk about sexual orientation, it refers to one's attracted to. So if you're attracted to either a man, to a woman, to both or neither, you know, who are you um, attracted to? Who do you want to be sexually intimate with? That is sexual orientation. Gender identity is something about the inner concept of oneself. So 
who do you identify yourself? Do you identify yourself as a woman? Do you identify yourself as a man? Male, female, both, or neither? So it has to be really differentiated. And I think that has been a buzz for everybody to talk about what is gender identity and sexual orientation. A transgender is basically someone, they call it in the umbrella term, for someone whose gender identity or gender expression is different from the sex assigned at birth. And that is why transgender individual usually transition to align themselves based on their gender identity. So I just want to share that because I think it's very important for our televiewers to understand the concept, what is LGB and what is transgender. They're totally different. If you're a transgender, does not imply your sexual orientation because the transgender can be straight, can be gay, can be lesbian, or can be bisexual as well. That was a big mouthful. <laughs> and again, it is. what's important is the fact that you are there to be able to understand and explain that. Having the training for it, which many of the primary cares in the community don't have. Well, we are lucky to have a very strong partnership with the, one of the biggest LGBT organization, the Garden State Equality. So we have a partnership in terms of training because they are known in the state of New Jersey to be a strong advocate and for education of the community. They are one of the organizations who really push the anti-bullying law as well as the equal marriage in the state of New Jersey. So we have proud to say that we were trained almost a thousand hundred of our employees in terms of uh, being sensitive and cultural. It's like understanding what is LGBT and transgender, particularly their needs. It is very important because I think um, if you are aware of what is terminology, you will be able to give a best care to this community. And understand the community. Exactly. Again, you have the education there and the background, which most primary cares don't have. You can therefore provide a better care. And since we're talking about health care, and we're talking about Robert Wood Johnson University Hospital, we're talking about the best possible care for these people. Yes, and um, Dr. Hans had um, been very embracing about this concept. In fact, the whole staff of the family practice of Robert Wood Johnson University Hospital in Somerset not only been trained in terms of cultural sensitivity, they were also trained how to address like hormone therapy or um, you know, psychosocial needs of the community. Which is, again is a feather in your cap, the fact that you're training people for the future who have more education than those who currently do, who are able to understand the LGBTQIA community and possibly be able to train others to be able to do it also. Yes, yes, uh, we are um, working on that. We have uh, currently four providers that uh, provide the care for the transgender population um, and we are working on um, expanding that um, and uh, we have um, trained all the uh, members of our office in um, sensitivity um, in our office. One of the most serious things that happen for the LGBTQIA community because of the harassment, because of the stigmata, because of uh, everything that goes on to, in the world. Tell us about screening for depression. Tell us about what you can do to help the people. I think it is really important that when an individual who identify themselves as LGBTQIA, when they seek medical providers, we should assess definitely, holistically. You know, not because I'm coming for flu, you'll just address my symptoms of flu. But there are many reasons why an individual are coming to the physicians or to their medical provider, but we don't understand some of the social implication that brought about to this physical symptoms. For example, like depression. Um, a lot of them are depressed because they have what you call the gender dysphoria, which is the distress of one's individual that are not aligned based on their gender identity and because of their sex at birth. And that is very common among the transgender individual, the depression. If the family are not supportive of them, if they're being bullied in school, so they opted not to go to school anymore and they start getting depressed, 
I think the bottom line is they are not, they want to be authentic to themselves. They just want to be true to themselves, and yet the society are not ready for that. That leads to depression. Well, also the fact that depression isn't just depression itself. It's the fact that they go to school, their grades suddenly uh, teeter off. Mm -hmm. They were some doing something in athletic, and suddenly they're now home after school uh, and not uh, uh, participating in something else. They had been part of a uh, community, a, a religious community, Community, they're no longer going. It's actually weeding that out as depression, which again, many primary carers may not understand or be educated about it, while you have the extra thoughts about it and, and maybe a little bit more understanding towards it. Yeah, as family doctors, we are uh, specifically trained in behavioral health, and we do have quite a bit of training um, during our uh, residency um, in identifying and treating um, a lot of behavioral uh, disorders, mental health disorders, uh, such as depression, anxiety, and a lot of these things. So um, in terms of my non-LGBTQIA practice, um, I actually do quite a bit of it, um, and so I, it's a natural part of my um, uh, healthcare um, approach, uh, and it's something that really does uh, fit in well with family medicine. Who's part of the Proud Family uh, Health uh, Clinic? So we have um, four providers. We have uh, myself, Dr. Martinez, and Dr. Kaminsky, and then uh, we have a nurse practitioner, Melissa Richardson, um, who are the um, providers. We also have a um, quite a few nurses who have volunteered to help um, with the education as well as um, taking care of uh, the patients and then uh, the front desk. Um, so uh, we have a couple of front desk providers as well as um, the nursing staff who um, are all very um, enthusiastic about uh, taking care of uh, the patients. They really enjoy the um, sessions that we have. I think also they have a provider who are expert in HIV as well mm. for screening, and one of which also speaks Spanish. So mm. I think that's mm -hmm. very important. Yes. It will try to address the diversity as well. Uh, it's not only among the English-speaking people, but you know, there are the LGBTQIA. I think is around the corners everywhere now. So oh, it's great that you have uh, a provider who does Spanish. Are we thinking about uh, any other languages? Um, well, it's dependent on what we speak, um, <laughs> and uh, Spanish is the only um, other language. I do sign, uh, sign language as well, but... Um, oh, good. Sign language yeah. also. Insurance. Since everyone is concerned about insurance and everyone's insurance changes, how is insurance accepted at the Proud uh, Family Center? We take um, most major insurances as well as uh, Medicaid, Medicare, um, and... Uh, it, people who don't have insurance, we have uh, the sliding scale as well as um, the hospital charity care we accept. So what's, what got you guys both involved in wanting to do something like this? This is something that when you finished internship residency, probably not something that you thought about. And when you finished your training as an RN and went into practice, probably not something that was on the forefront and yet so important nowadays. Well, it all started with the um, idea of forming a group called BRG Proud. Um, I am, these are a group of employees for both in New Brunswick and Somerset. And these are employees who identify themselves as the LGBTQIA community. What they foster is to promote positive working environment among the LGBT employees of Robert Wood Johnson University Hospital. And how it started is that they start looking at changing the policy of the hospital to, be, to make it more inclusive, such as putting the word sexual orientation and gender identity. Then we start working on the insurances, the healthcare benefits among these LGBT employees. And when they realize that, they think outside of the box and say, I think it's not only supposed to be in Robert Wood Johnson, but the community as well. And that's how they started their their outreach program where they come up with a partnership with the Pride Center of New Jersey and the Garden State Equality. And then during that time they realize the needs of this employees. Most of them are going out of state. Either they go to New York or they go to um, Pennsylvania just to seek care. And we realize this is not right. 
Well, especially because we're Robert Wood Johnson University Hospital, both New Brunswick and Somerset, one of the biggest and proudest uh, uh, campuses in New Jersey, we should be able to provide that. Well, I think that is one of the, the key messages here. We are in healthcare, we're healthcare providers, and we need to provide healthcare regardless of the sex, gender, or race. But the question is, how come we don't have it here in New Jersey? So that's how the, the, the conversation starts. And we are blessed to have our chief administrative officer, Mr. Tony Kava, who embraces this idea. And I think it's important for the healthcare leaders to, to understand, be able to listen to their employees. And that's how it started. And then we look at the, the statistics in New Jersey, how many who identify themselves as an LGBT. And that's what we, we said, you know, we need to do this. Let us take care of our own. There are a lot of LGBT have to go or forced to go somewhere else because they are so afraid that there's nothing here in New Jersey. So I think being the premier and the firm front, forefront of this is very important nowadays. Even the more important is the fact that the head of the Robert Wood Johnson embraced this and by embracing it formed this and allowed you to do everything that you're doing. Something that probably no other university hospital in New Jersey is even close to being able to do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And what, what got you in, into the so I think it's just kind of an evolution. I've taken care of my, many members over the years of the LGBT community, and um, I think um, just understanding what their unique needs are and some of the um, discrimination that they felt, felt during their um, typical everyday life um, was important um, f for me to understand um, and uh, got me interested. Um, I know certainly in my own life I've uh, experienced um, discrimination and how it feels and I certainly don't feel like anyone should have to um, experience that, especially in the healthcare setting. I'm, I'm, I'm very proud that you would say something like that and the proud that both of you wanting to do something to be so inclusive. I'm also proud of the fact that we all work for Robert Wood Johnson uh, University and the fact that right from the top we have people who are willing to go out there on a limb and do what's best for the community. Well. I also like to talk about briefly about the um, Proud Family Transgender Support Group. Um, as we mentioned a while ago, there is a medical provider, which we address the clinical needs of the patients, but the social needs, we have the support group. Um, this is basically a support group that provides help to the family members. Um, this is not for transgender individual, but this is for family members for spouses, for the brothers, sisters of a transgender individual. We said that we need to address that because there's a lot of family members who don't understand why they have to go through with this with their transgender individuals. And the name is also proud, so we're so proud of that as well. And well, it's first the, in the region. The social service part, the backing of the family makes everything much better. It's hard enough as a patient to mm -hmm. do it by themselves. If they don't have the family backing behind them, it makes it even more difficult, the decision that they make and the follow-up. And you want them to be proud. Yeah. You want them to be well taken care of. You want them, to, after the follow-up afterwards, to be proud of the decision they made and to live a good life afterwards. Definitely. And this is also a venue for a family member to feel they're not alone in this that there are other family members experiencing the same thing. And by hearing from one another, they learn from each other. And I think this is very important. As we said, a transgender individual, when they transition, the family transition as well. And that is very important. Well, I thank you both for being here. I thank you very much also for what you've done for the community, how proud you make the rest of us who work for Robert Wood Johnson University Hospital to have people like you who are willing to be out there doing what you do and doing it well. Thank you thank so you. much. Tell us a little bit about someone that came to the LGBTQIA uh, Proud uh, Health Clinic that really had something change because they came to the clinic? Um, you don't have to give names or anything. Was there someone who came that really stood out? I think um, one of the most important patients that we can say is the one who 
become authentic to themselves, that they're no longer um, have to hide themselves, their true selves, regardless of whose patient is this, is that when they go to the for family clinic, they feel safe, they feel welcome and accepted, and now it's being themselves. It's like a dream come true for them that there is a place in New Jersey, in the state of New Jersey, where they can be who they want to be, and they can seek help from the medical providers. Do you think we're going to be extending hours after eventually? Extending I think so. days? Yeah, we've um, had more of a response than we expected, um, and we have um, we are booked probably about a month in advance, um, and so I think in fairly short order, we probably will need to um, start expanding um, our services. And you're teaching the residents also? We are. Um, we haven't had them come into the uh, office yet, uh, but uh, we are planning on doing that uh, soon. And are they going to go through some any kind of special training beforehand? They already have. They had the same training that we did. Okay. Uh, anything, any last thoughts? What we should leave the audience knowing about? I think what is important is that, you know, with what's going on around our country today, there's a lot of anxiety and a lot of fear. I think um, I would like to start with the word heart. Everyone has a heart, but um, I think it's important to recognize that um, we all have the same heart, regardless of our color, regardless of our religion, regardless of the race. And I think that is more important. That's the core of why we live in this world. This concludes today's episode of Robert Wood Johnson University Hospitals Health Talk. Please remember that the opinions expressed here by our medical experts are not a substitute for medical advice from your own physician. If you need a physician, please call us at 1-888-MDRWJUH. For more information about PROUD, P-R-O-U-D, Family Health at Robert Wood Johnson University Hospital Somerset, please visit www.rwjuh.edu or call 1-855-PROUDFH to schedule an appointment. Thank you both for being part of the show, and thank you very much for everything that you do for this community. Thanks. Thank you. you.